obviously things are a little different than you thought they would go the last couple of weeks. Uh, you find yourself in a, in a much more prominent spot here. You've already talked about, you know, getting the call to face Islam on under two weeks notice. And you said there really wasn't any hesitation on your part. But I'm curious, how much thought did you give to this scenario presenting itself maybe over the last few months? So, you know, this you wanted this fight and you, you knew you'd be in Abu Dhabi. Is this something that kind of crossed your mind? Uh, to be honest, it didn't cross my mind, which is sort of surprising. Uh, but it's not at the same time because I was never told, did I want to be backup fighter or anything? Obviously, I was coming off surgeries. I just thought the chances of me stepping in is just, nah, not happening. Uh, so I thought even if he was to get in or Charles wants to get injured or whoever get injured, you know, I thought they would have a backup. I thought it would probably be Justin Gaethje. You know I mean? Like, I just didn't really, it didn't cross my mind. So I was doing my head in thinking I had to wait till January. Um, but turns out I don't. So uh, <laughs> here we are, and it, it's exciting. So uh, this is what it's all about for me. You know I mean? I love a challenge, and uh, as soon as this was, this whole, uh, this side of this, what would you call it? This guy that loves a challenge, guy that thrives off that. Um, here's this opportunity, and then straight away, smile and face and be like, let's do it. Let's take it on. Let's do the unthinkable. Let's do what people, well, I know a lot of people Why? think shouldn't be done. You know what I mean? They're the type of things that I want to do because uh, I love uh, going out there. And um, yeah, I just think these are things that people will remember. Of course. That, and, you know, every time we talk, legacy is the thing that comes up. I know how important legacy is to you. Alex, you know, what do you think that this will do for your legacy just to even take this opportunity, let alone, you know, coming away from it if you become double champ? I mean, the position I'm in, right, like, uh, obviously, things are going very well for me. You talk to him, like, you know, top, like, you know, obviously, whatever number I'm a pound for, but people consider me, you know, top pound for pound guys, you you know, featherweight champion on this crazy streak, you know, like, it's, and then... Yeah, like for me, even taking this, a lot of people are like, wow, like, you know what I mean? The position he's in and he's willing to, you know, risk all them things. You know, I think uh, that, that says a lot about who I am and what I'm about. Uh, but then going out there and doing what I plan on doing is just, made. I think it separates you from, you know, there's a, I, I believe I'm, I'm, I've, I've done a great job where I'm in some, I'm in with the, the talks, you know, I'm in talks of the, be, you know, some, a lot of, obviously there's a lot of uh, great champions and that. I'm in these talks, but you start doing things like this, you start being in talks of this very few people, you know what I mean? And that, that that's that's where we want to be. And uh, again, like you said, legacy seems like everything to me. Look, legacy is massive to me, but obviously it's all about my family. I want to be successful, but doing things like that and being remembered and having a legacy like this, Put it this way, you can look after your family for a very long time. So that, that means a lot to me. And, and you know, the, the number of fights you keep taking, I mean, that's got to take care of your family even more. You can put more additions on your house. You can put your kids through college. You can do all these things, right? It's It, it, well, it must be very nice to stay so active. Mm-hmm. 100%. 100% being um, that act active, obviously, that's extra paychecks. Uh, and that's what it's all about. But I mean, uh, I mean, it's good for the the mental health, uh, everything like that. Keeps me fit, keeps me in shape, uh, keeps me sharp. Um, it keeps me uh, sane. You know what I mean? When I'm out there doing what I know I should be doing to to look after my family. Because when I'm not doing that, I struggle. So it keeps staying active is good. Now you said on your YouTube channel that you weighed 181 pounds. When you got the call, you know, you're not, you're not far away from weighing it at this point. How well has the weight come off? I see you drinking a lot of water, of course. Uh, any concerns oh, yeah, about clearing the weight or, or you, you think you're in good Nah, no, no concerns at all. Like, obviously, when we first got the call, I was like, because uh, I weighed in the day before. And I was 82 kilograms. I don't know what that is in pounds, but I was 82 kilograms uh, the day before. We're sort of laughing about it like. Oh wow! Like, well, you know, I mean, I better. I'm gonna, you know. So I literally started eating a little bit better that day. Had a couple of sessions. Ended up losing a couple of kilos overnight. Um, but yeah, I remember. So I had a one day head start from where, where when uh, I got the call. Then I got the call and I was like uh, laughing because my manager asked me, he goes, "What were you weighing?" And what do you weigh? I'm like, I laughed. I go, "Well, yesterday I was 82. Let me check now." And then I was like around uh, 79 or or yeah, like 80, 79. Which uh, so I lost a couple of kilos. Uh, overnight, and then, uh, but the weight obviously seems like a, a lot, but I knew it was a lot of it was just water. And now my weight, mate, you can see that uh, I'm lighter than I was uh, in February. 
at this time. I was going to ask you, you know, you, you, you're saying you're lighter and, and, and all that. Do you expect you're going to, because you, you carried more mass for that fight. You, you purposefully put on more mass. And you thought right. you kept a little bit of that for even the uh, year fight, right? Like you, you went down and you thought that you didn't get rid of it or anything like that necessarily. I Where just don't think I would have put on. you're going to be in there. I don't think I put on too much. Obviously, we we uh, definitely put a heap on, but um, I mean, it's not easy to put on like muscle. You know what I mean? Like, so obviously, we tried. We ate ate a lot of calories. I do think I might have uh, built up a, a little bit there. But uh, yeah, like even as soon as I started, like to cut back the weight, it wasn't too bad. We're talking pretty minimal, really. But um, I probably was holding a little more muscle mass back uh, in February than I am now. I'd say, like you know. But uh, at the same time, like uh, I, I was happy. Like even uh, while we're doing the camp, I was like, you know, I don't know if I want to be too heavy. I feel like uh, sharper. Uh, actually, after the fight, I even said. I would rather fight at my normal weight against Islam now. Now that I know that the strength's uh, not too much of an issue, I want to be sharper. You know what I mean? I want to be uh, moving and, and be that little bit sharper. So that was a decision we pretty much made after that fight anyway. And there you go. Obviously, everything lined up then. So, you know, how many mm -hmm. times have you had short notice experiences like this in your career where, you you, you know, you get the call and, okay, you've got a couple of weeks, you get it done. How often does this happen for you? I mean, I have had some uh, early in my career before UFC. Um, I've had late call ups of other like other guys getting injured, then late replacements that way. Um, obviously, last year I was here uh, coming off a broken hand, um, and I only had how much did I have? I think I had like five weeks preparation to be the backup fighter. Um, so that's all short notice. Uh, you know what I mean? Things like that. Um, I've done that a couple times. I did that for Max and Frankie. So I've uh, had short camps. A lot of I had a few short camps. Nothing ever this short. Uh, to be quite honest, like uh, I don't think many people have had my, uh, my, many uh, this short, but yeah, so it's uh, definitely uh, different, but I mean, uh, it's exciting. And like uh, like I've been saying all week, I'm, I'm so fresh because I didn't have to worry about a fight camp. I didn't have to physically uh, and mentally exhaust myself. I get to go into this fresh, excited, and almost a lot almost have fun. Like, you know what I mean? I'm experienced enough to go out there and have fun, see what's in front of me and, and do my thing. I am honestly at a, at a level in my career where I can be like that. I think I'm most dangerous like that. So uh, let's see how it goes. Right. So there's less wear and tear because you don't have that full fight camp. Well, you also percent. don't have I'm carrying... the injury because you, you had a foot injury going into the first fight, correct? Oh, man, I've had uh, plenty of injuries. You know what I mean? Like going into that, um, yeah, like uh, plenty of injuries in, in a lot of fights. Uh, but yeah, definitely. And then ones uh, you're carrying injuries, definitely uh, carrying a few injuries. And now, no, no injuries. You know what I mean? Good, ready to go. Obviously, they had the surgery in the arm, but that's that's sweet now. When did you get back to the point where that you were past the surgery? Like when were you like hundred percent? I'm I'm back to. It. Back from the surgery? Yes. Um, I don't know. I started sparring about you know four or five weeks ago. I think something like that. So that was when I was able to pretty much go one hundred percent. So what was training like for you? Because it's obviously it's it's a very abbreviated time. But what was the state of your training regimen before the fight? I mean, how often are you in the gym? How how hard are you training? And what what's the comparison to, to like a normal fight camp? Oh yeah, normal fight camps are different. You know, what I mean, uh, it was it's a lot more. But I mean, I was able to maintain some fitness in the gym. Obviously, upskill. That's what I'm in the gym for. Out of camp, I go there. Obviously, again to keep keep saying. Uh, but get some sessions, stay in half decent shape, but that's where we evolve. Um, and I'm glad I was like that. Like I said, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, but you weren't doing the camp. I go, yeah, well, you know, it's short notice. I'd rather do how I do it how I did it now because I didn't, you know, I'm not physically, mentally over this fight just when thinking about it and you know what I mean and bashing myself, you know, like, oh, if this happens and then these, these stresses, I didn't have any of that. I had a little holiday, not, not just not that long ago at all, a holiday with the family. Like not even thinking about a fight camp, and then I come in fresh. All right, sweet, let's go, let's go in uh, all out. You know, in this short amount of time we got. Interesting. Now, if you had a full fight camp, let's say you could have prepared for this, what might you have done differently, preparation wise? Because this is the second time against Islam, of course. And a lot of the camps are the same. You go out there and you just make sure you prepare for the worst. I mean, we're we're, we're pretty much doing a a lot of the things that we feel we we would do anyway. Um, but yeah, you just prepare for the worst luck in camp. You know what I mean? You make sure if you need to go five rounds of war, 
um, you can go there. You need to know that you can cover all bases. No matter where this fight goes, we are ready. Um, I don't have time to to do that. Can I do five rounds? Yeah, 100% I can. But I don't have time to prepare for that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like, oh, yeah, I'll do this. If this goes this way, I, go, uh -uh. I refuse to do it anyway. I've got, this is my plans. This is what I manifest, and this is what I'm going to go out and do. And you've already got your plan scheduled out to January. It's time, you know, it's not 100% here, but it seems like you are on track to still defend your featherweight title in January, all things considered. Uh, assuming well, that was locked in. That was, with, that was, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was locked in before we got this, uh, this fight. Right. It, it, you're in a weird position here because we don't have championship level fighters with two fights essentially booked going up. Your, your schedule's full already. This is a, this is a strange scenario you find yourself in now. Yeah, it is. But I mean, I love it. You know what I mean? Like I said, do things that what, what people are, you know, do things that people aren't doing. You know what I mean? And, uh, and as I said, uh, staying active and keep getting them paychecks and keep building that legacy. Assuming you are, you know, everything goes well, and assuming you leave Abu Dhabi with two belts, are you prepared to, you know, have as many as four championship fights next year? 100% I am. 100%. Like, how many? How, how much longer do I have left? Like, I, I don't know. I do feel great right now, but, I mean, who, how long is that going to be? I'm 35 years old. Uh, four fights next year sounds great to me. So, uh, you know what I mean? Four big fights. And I want them all big, and I want them all challenges. Bring them on. I love it. I love it. Uh, Makachev, of course, you know, he hasn't competed since your last fight. You had the fight in July against Yair, which is now. Uh, I know you're a confident guy, but what does it do for you mentally when you get to go out there coming off a loss and get a win in between there? Uh, yeah, I get to right you know again there's a lot of adjustments i wanted to do i get to write a lot of them wrongs in camp uh go out there and, and get that you know obviously i was coming off the loss so it's good for me to get that off there you know what i mean even for him even though like let's be real he got his hand raised but i guarantee you for him that felt like a big loss to him as well he knows that a, a, a lot of people in this world think that i won he knows uh all that so he hasn't got to go out there and uh right the wrongs or do anything like that. He hasn't been hasn't had a chance to do that. So he has to do that with the same guy that he had massive problems with. Um, you know what I mean? So, uh, again, there's a lot of pressure on this on, on him. So uh, we'll see how he handles it. How many times have you personally gone back and watched the first fight between you two? I've watched it a fair few times. You know, there's a... Obviously, it was a massive fight. You know, it, was a, it lived up to all the, uh, all the hype. And there was a, a lot to learn from that, that fight. So, uh, yeah, I've watched it quite a few times. How many times do you see, like, when you watch that, are you are you looking for opportunities? I won every fight? single time. <laughs> you're <laughs> you're looking asking? for all those opportunities. You could have just done that a little differently, right? Yeah, of course. There's, a, there, there's definitely a lot of things like that. So that's why, I mean, I've, I've been able to do that all year. So, like, uh, I know how to, I know, I know what I need to do. Uh, so I've been able to think about that all year. Yeah, I wasn't in camp training for this, but my head has been locked in on on Islam still here and there. You know what I mean? And the last question I have for you is, is uh, you know, the fact that you said one thing you'd like to do differently, too, is you want to give him less respect in there. What does that entail? I'm not a fighter. You help me help me understand what it means for you to actually just give him less respect. I mean, obviously, I went in there and I was worried about I didn't want him to get the takedown. I wanted to be a lot more cautious there, um, fight that a little bit different just in case he gets the takedown. Um, even when he did grab me, be careful of the submissions. Like, you know, what I mean, where now I feel like, no matter, I don't think whatever he throws at me, I know whatever he throws at me, I can handle. And I can't afford, like I said, I can't afford to hesitate and try and feel him out and see, you know, is he, you know, I can't, you know, I can't afford to do any of that. I need to go out there with full confidence that I'm a better fighter than this guy and I can land these shots and I can finish him and I will finish him. That's my mentality going in. I have to.